During our last episode, I explained to you the basic importance of poultry feeding, how it affects the nutritional intake of your beds and the farm, and how the importance will affect the production of your flock. Today, I am going to take you on the different types of poultry feed mash we have. For example, there are about seven to eight types of feed mash we have in poultry. We have the chicks feed mash, we have the growers feed mash, the layers feed mash, broiler starter, broiler finisher, turkey starter, and turkey finisher. And on the category of formulation of rations, in formulating of feed for rations, there are four crucial factors you must consider during your formulation process. Which are, one, you need to consider the type of feed ingredients that are regularly available locally, the condition which they come, and what are their prices, in the sense that you shouldn't go ahead to get the raw materials you know that are not reachable within your location because of the raining day when you may not be able to find those or locate those raw materials there should be a plan b where you can be able to source locally and be able to produce your feed too secondly the choosing ingredients are they seasonal or available all year round there's some raw materials you may choose out there which are like seasonal which some of them comes only you can only find them during rainy season some you can find them only during dry season it's not supposed to be that way you're supposed to choose a raw material that you know that all year round you can actually get them for your flock. Knowing you fully well that in poultry farming, once you start feeding beds, you've already started. There's nothing like, okay, I'm coming back, don't feed today, I'll feed you tomorrow. So therefore, you need to make sure you get those raw materials that you know that on a regular basis they are out there for you with or without you sourcing them, traveling far and wide to get them you will see them locally those are the things you need to consider and the third thing you need to consider are there substitutes just like what i explained now are there substitutes as an alternative you can easily procure in the even that the preferred ingredients in a situation where the preferred ingredients are not readily available for any reason those are the things just like i explained previously before now i was like you need to get those raw materials you know that even corn rain concern, you must see them to feed your flock. You understand? Knowing that if you don't see these things and you don't have an alternative, you, you lose your beds, you lose your business, you lose your investments, and that will tell on you. So, and the fourth one you also need to consider is the quality of the nutrients you're taking, the composition of the raw materials chosen. You need to confirm that they contain the extent profile of nutrients required for your flock. You can't just go out there and purchase any raw material you see. You first of all need to like test them, confirm that okay, oh, they are good. They can be used. They meet the nutritional requirements of the flock involved. So that you don't end up formulating a feed that will end up at the end of the day cost more havoc to your flock or more diseases or any other thing you can ever think of. Because feeding your beds is one thing. Then giving your beds nutritional food is another thing then know that in feed formulation you have to plan for the unexpected therefore always plan ahead for unforeseen circumstances and eventualities especially with respect to the above mentioned factors like the factors i've explained so far you need to plan a situation whereby in case these things doesn't come up what am i supposed to do next okay in my source of carbohydrate for example if i don't see maize what else am I supposed to use? Can I use this to substitute this? Okay, can I plan this and use this as an alternative plan? You shouldn't plan it in a way that it must be this. So if that raw material is not available, you will end up starving your flock, which will eventually lead them to death. And you will lose as a business owner. Then, if not, you may incur a huge loss, yes, as your animals and business will suffer as a result. If you don't plan it well, you end up feeding them wrong feed, which will come up with a disease. And probably by the time you finish treating the disease, you must have lost some, which should have been part of your capital or part of your profit, whichever way. But it will tell on you as the business owner. In as much as you 
lost these things you can't wake them up so they've gone they've gone along with everything you purchased the cost of implications and all your stress then in chicks feed mash there's some nutritional quantities you're supposed to bear in mind for example in chicks feed mash it has 20 percent of crude protein 2640 energy cow 1.0 percent of calcium 0.35 percent of phosphorus 3.5 percent of fat and 7.5 percent of fiber so all these things you need to bear it in mind and according to this record you can see that okay i try to bring them down and calculate them in such a way that you will find out that in growers for example it contains 16 percent crude protein then 2450 energy cal 1.0 percent calcium 0.35 percent phosphorus 3.7 percent fat and 5 percent fiber so there are some quantities you need to bear in mind that okay this is the quantity required quantity for so 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 nutrient because in free formulation you can just buy raw materials and start mixing them it's not done that way everything has its own quantity the right quantity for each raw material you purchase so knowing the feed formulation the formulas goes a long way considering the fact that feeding your beds accounts for 70 to 80 percent of your investment so you need to be careful with what you give your animals then in layers mash it contains 16.5 percent crude protein 2500 energy 3.5 percent calcium 0.5 0.45% phosphorus, sorry, 3.7% fat, and 7.5% fiber. You can see it all written here. Then in broiler finisher, it contains 2,700 energy cow, 18% proof protein, 3.5% fat, and then 6.0 fiber. So you can see that all the feed materials you use to produce a feed has its own different quantities that they can be used. It's not everything you purchase. For a desired quantity of feed you want to produce, you ought to know the desired quantity of each raw materials in the makeup of that feed. Then in turkey feed mash, turkey feed mash also has a starter and a finisher mash. The starter feed mash contains a higher protein percentage compared to broiler starter mash. While the turkey finisher feed mash has a higher energy level when compared to broiler finisher feed mash composition. So here I'm trying to explain to you that in Toki feed mash, the starter has a higher protein percentage when you're comparing it to broiler starter mash. You know that turkeys you raise them for them to grow for meat, for them to grow bigger and all that. So they require a lot of protein for them to get that big you're looking at. Then their finisher too also have higher energy level compared to broiler finisher mash you need the weight you need the weight for you to sell them out there in the market you need a big giant token then we'll try to round it up here for now on our next episode i'm going to break these formulas down for you in a simpler language and also teach you the sources of each ingredient for example the carbohydrate sources the protein sources the mineral sources and what they are being used and also the substitute you can actually use to supplement in case what you choose for a particular source is not available what else can be as a supplement to that so please watch out for the next episode and you will not regret it thank you